Good morning, everyone. Guys, we've got situations brewing in the United Kingdom day on day that are leading us to a civil war. So the article I want to focus on today is this one that's out about the, the Ugandan who clubbed someone to death in the back of an ambulance, you know, and they can't be deported. Guys, when I first saw this, you know, trending on um, on X, I thought this was one of those, oh yeah, this is one of those clickbait things. It's not actually that, you know, there's uh, mitigating circumstances, there's other stuff around this that, you know, that kind of make it just clickbait. But guys, the more I look into it, the more dysfunctional I actually see this. And what do I always say on this channel? Guys, you know, nothing is hidden anymore. You can't, you know, you can't hide these like 10, 20 years ago. You could brush these things under the carpet. You could put a lid on it. You could hide these things. You could hide these things. You just can't do that anymore, guys. Nothing is hidden. So the these little, these, I mean, this is not even a little thing, is it? You know, these, you know, this road that people are looking at now. Remember the civil unrest that we have right now in the United Kingdom. Guys, we have got mass amounts of civil unrest. Just because Keir Starmer's put a lid on it for the time being and tightened that lid really close, shut, the more people see things like this, what I'll come on to in a minute, you know, the more fuel's given to that uh, that boiling pot. And guys, at some time, it is going to explode. You know, I did a video um, like a couple of days ago, and I said that, you know, me and Sarah was in uh, Weatherspoons and was having our dinner. And then there was a picture of, I think it was, um, I, think it, I, can't, I think it was David Lammy. And then Keir Starmer came up and people were just shouting like vile abuse at them, you know. And then the people started to say, yeah, but if we put, if, if we share our, it was less articulate. You know, people were saying if we share our opinions on social media, we'll get sent to jail. And that's the problem right now, guys. People feel like nobody's listening to them. People feel like they don't have a voice. And it's not just it's not just a minority of people that feel like they don't have a voice. It's the majority that feel like they don't have a voice. Guys, it, this is absolutely wild. The article I'm going to share with you now, guys, it's absolutely insane. Literally reading the points that the, you know, that the article is talking about, it like I genuinely couldn't, I, I can't believe what's happening to this country at the moment, guys. You know, we do, if you can't deport people like this, you know, what hell, what, what, how are we going to deport the mass amounts of people that are already in this country, you know, that, are, that have not clubbed people to death in the back of ambulances? How are we going to, you know, what is this, what's going on in the country, guys? You know, if we can't deport people that club people to death in the back of ambulances or club people to death or anything like, you know, anything even associated with that, if we can't deport these people, how are we going to deport the people that have come here illegally? You know, because even, you know, from this article, you know, even if they go around clubbing people to death in the back of ambulances, then we still can't deport them. So, you know, where do, how can we, how can we get our country back, guys, if we can't deport people? And from this article, I'm going to call it, guys, we're not deporting anyone from this article. So let's just go to the share screen then, if I can find it. I was I was having problems last night, guys, because I had so many screens open on uh, last night's live stream. I, you know, I was live streaming for like, I think almost two hours. I didn't even get all the articles done because there were so many questions, so much stuff coming up. Uh, this one, guys. Uh, Ugandan killer jailed for life won't be deported after murdering a man in the back of an ambulance. So I thought, right, okay, right, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll go with this article because there's surely, surely this can't be the case. Surely there's, you know, there's mitigating circumstances. Uh, a killer from Uganda. So he's, you know, by definition, he's a migrant who murdered a man in the back of an ambulance will not be deported after a judge said it would breach, it would be a breach of human rights. So who, who's human rights, guys? You know, and this is absolutely insane. The murderer, named only as ZM, obviously got to protect, you know, got to protect our murderers, uh, but not protect the people who post on Facebook. And can you see, guys, can you see? Now, I, I know, I know I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to be as impartial as I can be, but can you see now? Can you see the duality, the two tierness of protecting a murderer's name, but then publicizing and having an open dock on people who share things on social media? Can, can you see that now, guys? Can, can you actually see that from these articles? Absolutely insane. Um, 
after being granted anonymity, chased his victims, Eugene Brehe, Brehen, Brehner, into an ambulance along with his North London gang. North London. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume he didn't talk in that accent. Uh, the gang attacked Brenner with baseball bats and golf clubs and, and clubbed him to death. I mean, where were they going? Were half of them on the way to a baseball game and the others? I, I don't even know how that happens, guys, you know. Uh, a judge ruled that he should serve a minimum term of 16 years in prison. Efforts by the Home Office to have him deported on his release were blocked by a first tier immigration judge. Now, guys, I tried to find, you know, I, I got this guy's name. I tried to find connections with Keir Starmer. I, 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 I couldn't find them. I'm not saying they're not there, but there's just not much about this judge. ZM's lawyers argued, listen to this, guys. This is insane. I can't believe I'm living in this country. ZM lawyers argued, <clears throat> who's paying these guys, that it would be inhumane to deport him back to Uganda as there's no facilities to treat his mental health conditions. Do you know what, guys? As a taxpayer, I don't care. I genuinely don't care. I really don't. The killer had a psychiatric disorder. Oh, the, guys, a lot of these people, they do have psychiatric disorders, don't they? It just seems like, you know, whether whether it's somebody who self-deletes, whether it's somebody who attacks people in airports, they all seem to have mental health problems. It's strange, isn't it? Uh, which had a psychiatric disorder, which caused him to suffer a pervasive distrust and suspicion and suspiciousness the court heard who's diagnosing this guys you know i was talking to my sister the other day and um we were talking we, we were talking about a family member you know who's really struggling at the moment and we we're saying you know what you know everybody's wanting to say people have got mental health problems because but what if people don't have mental health problems what if that's just the way they are and we're looking at them and thinking, oh, that's what you want to do, is it? That's what that's what you enjoy doing. All right. Yeah, you must have a mental health problem. What if there's no mental health problems there, guys? What if some people just enjoy doing this? Some people just look, that's just how some people are. You know, that's, you know, I, I don't know if there's any truth to that, guys. That's, you know, just a conversation we had and I'm speculating there. Obviously, guys, this video is a lot of my, you know, my opinions, my speculations, my analysis. <clears throat> The court was told the disorder made him preoccupied with grievances and grudges against those who he believed had harmed him. According to lawyers, his, top, his, top, his deportation would be a traumatic event. Guys, I can't believe, I honestly thought, I, like, I, like, I had to read the whole article to you guys. Otherwise, you wouldn't have believed me. You would not have believed me. He's not getting deported because it would be traumatic to him. Well, do you know what? How do you think that guy in the back of the ambulance felt? How do you think his family felt? Guys, this guy suffers from massive mental health problems. I'm going to say, guys, call, you know, call me a conspiracy theorist if you want. Call me whatever you want. But I'm going to say when he gets released, he's still going to be a threat. Uh, the court accepted there would be a serious, rapid and irreversible decline in his mental health if he was to be deported. It was ruled that he this would be in breach of his Article 3 rights under the European Convention on Human Rights, which protects individuals against inhumane and degrading treatment or torture. Guys, it's just absolutely insane. In my opinion, there's no reason, you know, and that's so that's the judge there, Christopher John Hansen. He, he, I don't know, he sounds German. The senior, sorry, Christopher John Hansen, the senior immigration judge said, I find that if, and again, guys, I find it grotesque we're hiding, we're protecting this guy's anonymity, we're protecting this guy's name and we're giving him anonymity. When we have all those people who posted things on Facebook, we have all their names and their trials plastered on the, you know, like it, it, it was, guys, it was just, abs it was antiquated, antiquated. It was just, guys, it was ridiculous. It was, it, it felt to me like an absolute betrayal. I find that if ZM was removed to, again, it just gets worse. I find that if ZM was removed to Uganda, there would be serious, rapid, irreversible decline in, his, in their state of health, resulting in intense suffering or, significantly redu or a significant reduction in life expectancy. Guys, should we care about murderers? Should we really? You know, and this type of... This type as well, where he, where from the article, they chased somebody, a gang of them with bats and golf clubs. 
into the back of an ambulance. It's absolutely insane. Is this the type of people we protect now in the United Kingdom? It, from the article, guys, it is. All those factors lead me to conclude that there is a real risk of ill treatment capable of breaching Article 3, um, Article 3 rights in the context of reception procedures in Uganda. So what he's saying there is the Ugandans won't want him. The Ugandans don't want to take their men back their mental health, their mentally, um, their, their, their mental health, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I think I've used that in the wrong context. Basically, the Ugand from this article here, guys, what I'm reading, what I'm interpreting it as, the Ugandans don't want to take back they're murderers. That's it. They're, no, we don't want him. You guys keep him in the United Kingdom. The Refugee Council expects an appeal appeals to surge with many challenging their deportation, uh, their deportation on human rights grounds. Guys, that's not going to be that 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 will be upheld. Why will it be upheld? Because we are living in an absolute clown world, guys. All right. I can remember a day, a time when law was adhered to, you know, we had policing by consent. Right now, we're moving into a stage where we're going to have to have policing by force. You know, this is not, guys, I, I, I struggle to see anyone who thinks this is the right decision. And like I said at the beginning of the video, it's these things that are leading us towards a civil war. Because people are seeing this. Normal, everyday people are opening their news feed. They're seeing this. They're seeing what's happening. They're looking at their high street. You know, they're looking at a certain demographic that are really violent when they're, you know, when they're when they're in um, having interactions with public, you know, and they're thinking, hang on a minute, we can't deport murderers. And again, the way that this was, they beat somebody to death with bats and uh, golf clubs, you know, so we can't deport this type of person. So how do we have any hope of, you know, and I don't want to use the word getting rid of, but removing the people that have come here illegally how do we do that guys if we can't deport you know murderers how do we you know um you know how do we remove the people who have come here illegally guys this is leading to civil war i'm telling you now well I, i'm telling you now guys i'm you know i'm i'm i don't see any other way guys that this does not lead to you know civil war because what will happen is the next time there's an incident, and guys, there will be another incident. And it, guys, honestly, it breaks my heart to even say that. There will be another incident. There will be another grotesque incident. Maybe not that one. Maybe not that incident. Though. Maybe it won't be that incident that sends people over the edge. Maybe it'll be the incident after that, you know, because people will be too scared. But once people break the chains, once people break the chains, and I'm talking about you know, the rank and file person. I'm talking about the silent majority. I'm talking about, you know, those people who go and work their nine till fives, they come home on a Friday and they just want to be left alone. They don't want to get into trouble because they'll lose their jobs. They don't want to be seen at a riot or a protest because they'll lose their jobs. They don't want to post anything on, the, on Facebook or whatever because they'll lose their jobs. Once those people stand up and they will stand up in huge numbers, guys, once they, those people stand up and realize I've got nothing left to lose, that's when it's going to go, guys. And we are heading down that path. We really are. Anyway, guys, I'm going to be live tonight at 8, as always. Don't forget to be there. I'll be answering your, you guys' questions. Guys, you guys kept me on for an extra hour last night. Uh, I don't mind. I love it. Um, you know, make sure you fire your questions in. You know, we're going to be talking about all sorts of stuff. There's been mad stuff happening in the world. We've got a lot of updates from uh, from the Middle East. More on Ukraine. More on this. I wanted. I didn't even get all my points in last night, guys. I wanted to do a talk on this war against um, you know against young men at the moment. And remember, I'm confident now that I'm the only person, like the only person who's got you know any platform. Um, you know, I talked about this, this, this group of young men and the age bracket that they're in. Nobody else is talking about them. And now I've, I found an article now that teachers at schools are actively trying to uh, manipulate that, that uh, age bracket of men. Anyway, guys, I'm going to back to grid. And I'll get you guys another video later. Don't forget to be there tonight at eight.